Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of American Horror Stories Season 2, Episode 5, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. I'm no, not going to no, 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 say it one more time. No. I'm just, just going to stop there. All just, right. Okay, I will say from the start, like, I... I'm not a big purveyor in urban legend, so like until I saw the title and started doing some research, I did not actually know that this was a real thing. I knew that this was a real <laughs> thing. I was a kid in the 80s and 90s and Ouija boards and all that, you know, Bloody Mary. That was all kind of a thing back then. See, I just thought it was Beetlejuice. If you said the name Beetlejuice a number of times, I didn't know there were multiple different people you could summon up like this. Yeah, I mean, Bloody Mary's been around for a very long time. Well, dare I say it, two really good episodes of this show in a row. I don't know what's happening. Well, actually, I kind of do know what's happening. This is the second straight week we've had a, a new writer to this show, and I just think that they needed some new energy they needed some new ideas it's working out for you guys i absolutely loved this episode it had like a little bit of energy from the craft if anybody remembers that movie from back you know in the day in the 80s 90s kind of era and it also had these vibes a uh, friend of friends of mine made this movie called truth or dare if anyone has seen that with lucy hale which was sort of had that same idea of like oh, you have to do this truth or dare, or you're going to die if you don't do it. And it sort of had that element of that at the beginning where I was like, oh, the stakes are high. <laughs> There's so much good stuff to talk through. I have one issue, but we'll get to that one issue later on in this video. Before we go further, though, hit that subscribe button. You know, we have still more episodes of Horror Stories to go. Like, maybe... Mm -hmm. Theoretically, it's possible they could keep this winning streak going. If there's three good episodes of horror stories consecutively, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I think I'll just have an out-of-body experience. No, yeah, okay, we've had some goose eggs this season, like Drive. But, I mean, <laughs> overall, the majority of the episodes have been good. And I know that not everybody liked last week's episode as much as we did. Yeah, but we did. I really like episodes like that and like this that sort of have a little bit of history mixed in with the horror and that kind of vibe to it so i mean i really like this i think for me the, the first thing that really made bloody mary as an episode work was that there was real effort put into sort of developing the young characters, you know, the mm -hmm. teenagers at the heart of this episode, it's different than, you know, and I, and I love Bro House, don't get me wrong, but Bro House is the ultimate so bad it's good episode, but like there, those characters were so <laughs> hollow, and it's like, here, you really learn a lot about Bianca and some of her friends and what, what they're going through and why they would summon up Bloody Mary in the first place. Yeah, and it's that that sort of solid plot point yeah. where you had each of these characters of what they wanted and sort of what they were willing to do or not do and to be able to get this from Bloody Mary, having them each in the separate rooms asking for what it is that they wanted really lent to the mystery history and i mean okay i didn't see the twist with elise coming until they were walking through the forest at that point as it was getting darker darker and darker i'm like oh no okay all right whatever it is that she asked for she's giving it and she's giving it up with her sister but they did such a good job in this episode for me anyways not knowing that that was coming. Uh, the one thing that I will say is I kind of wish that they had built up a little bit more of Elisa's relationship with her mother. They showed it a little bit, but I think if they had shown it even more, there would have been more payoff when it was revealed that she was like, yeah, you know, life is really bad with my mom. These guys that she's bringing home, like the bad things are happening, that sort of thing. We're sleeping in the car. They touched on it a little bit enough that there was payoff, but I wish that there was a little bit more because it would have made it even sort of more devastating as well as more of a plot point that she would be doing this. And even more like with her sister where it would be like, okay, Elise really wants to help her sister out of this because it seems like she's taking the brunt of a lot of her mom, these guys she's bringing home, you know, protecting her sister from a lot of this. 
yeah, it's sort of you're talking through some of this. I kind of thought in my head, it's like, should this have been like an 80 minute movie instead of an episode of American Horror Stories? Because, yeah, I think we needed more time to sort of get depth as to what was going on with the lease. I'm going to say it. This could have been a whole season. I'm I'm just going to say it. It really yeah. could have. With these four characters as well developed as they were in just the 40 minute yeah. episode, if this had been over a whole season and sort of watching each of them go through some of this and even having like one of them maybe decide to actually do it, like hit send on those pictures yeah. and sort of see what happens with that. I mean, it it really could have ended up with the two sisters at the end where it really was like, oh, you know, one of us has died. One of us got sort of what they wanted. They went through it and they're not dead. So eh, now we have harder choices. I am I am with you in that I did not see the Elise twist coming no, I didn't. either. And, you know, I'm sure I'm speaking to you, commenter, who is about to put in the comments, I saw it coming. How could you guys not see it coming? Well, here, here you go. I, I tip my hat to you guys. High five to yeah, you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Give yourself a high five because you know what? We didn't see it coming. This is our video. We were shocked. No, I was really surprised. They, The writers did an excellent job yeah. of really building that relationship, that sisterly relationship and that, you know, protection where Elise was just like, I got you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to get you through this. You don't deserve to go through this. I've had you throughout life. I'm going to continue to have you throughout this as well. And that's why when we got to the end where she was like, Bloody Mary didn't just offer me money. She offered me, you know, power and security and yeah. whatever. And I was like, okay, this is a, a bigger payoff. She wouldn't just kill her sister for money. And that's where I was like, the word security felt more like they needed to flush that out more. And the security could have not just been money, that it really could have been security from their mother who's willing to throw them out and make them sleep in a car for a dude or that these guys coming over, you know, are starting to not just come at Elise, but now starting to kind of circle around her sister and really make it that that word security is the thing that she's willing to do whatever for. Yeah, they, they could have anchored that a little bit more to make it even more powerful. I mean, they did, I think, enough so that we could buy into what Elise was thinking. And, you know, even though in our heads we may be like, okay, maybe we would make a different choice than what we made, what she made. But you know what? I I get it. I at least understand where they were going with a lot of it that made it viable. And I think mm -hmm. Elise had clearly sort of convinced herself enough over time, maybe with Bloody Mary's help, that like what she was doing was really the right thing, that, you know, she could still look after her now dead sister in the afterlife, that she was giving her peace, that she was giving herself peace. I think she had convinced herself that this was like a win-win, even though it clearly was not. It was interesting, though, to see that when Bianca finally yeah. gave the blood of the innocent, that she just cut herself. And I was just kind of like, oh, Elise, <laughs> you could have just, you know, yeah. told your friends what they needed, what she needed, and they would have given it to her. If all they had to do was cut their hand and give yeah. some blood, I think they all would have been like, okay, if we can save you, then we will. I think I think they needed to think through some potential loopholes in the Bloody Mary system. Yeah, I mean, my guess is that Elise felt she had to do that to be able to convince her sister of this. But I mean, her sister would have done anything to help her. Yeah, I, and I she think did. So. Yeah, she she really really did. I mean, leading up to everything we get in this sort of big conclusion, and this is where you know my emotions about this episode get a little bit more mixed in that like I do love how they sort of wrapped all this up in history in the 19th century and mm -hmm. some things that you know at least some real life things that were happening around that time yes. and I think that stuff was really really powerful the only thing that I wish they did differently in this episode this is I guess a recurring theme with milkmaids as well just, I didn't love the ending twist I don't understand why we had to sort of have 
Bianca become the new Bloody Mary. It's like, are we, maybe this is just me as someone who likes to play video games and always be like the good person and always like help people and have like the happy, non-sad ending. Like why, why do we always have to like trap the hero or kill everybody or just like completely have a wah, wah ending? Because it's called horror uh, stories. You can't just have everybody get away at the end. That doesn't always happen. <laughs> Sometimes the hero will get away and then they'll just be, you know, chased for the rest of their lives like Sydney Prescott over on screen. But, you know, this is horror stories and they do like to have that twist. Yes, I didn't like the twist with the milkmaids and all that that was going on at the end of that. But I liked it here, sort of the you do the right thing and you do help somebody, but it does come with a sacrifice. And that was sort of the theme of this whole episode and just the game in general. You can get what you want, but it's going to come with a sacrifice. And where we see Bianca then sacrifice, you know, herself to give life back to Bloody Mary. I mean, yeah, it wasn't the sacrifice she thought she was giving or that she thought she was doing, but you know, sometimes, <laughs> Things don't work out. You want to do the right thing and it just, you know, it helps somebody, but it don't help you. I I will say, I love the Bloody Mary, like, costume, the visual design behind mm -hmm. all that, how they made the mirror and all that. Like, you know, I think we've all seen in horror or supernatural or any other stuff like this, like, the idea of somebody living in a mirror. And I think a mm -hmm. lot of times they're sort of, like, conjured up mm -hmm. as, like, this ghostly apparition like i love the color choices here with like the dark red i love the finger it's like there's just some really cool visual stuff that they thought a lot about yeah she was wonderful <laughs> yeah like that that everything about like the the basic idea of this was just so cool and inspired and different it didn't yeah. feel like they were sort of playing off anything else that was directly out there i think it also helped that they just had a really good cast yeah like a really really good cast that they really made me care about everyone and even as they were kind of faced with the decisions you know do I drop this girl on her head do I send these pictures out that it really had my heart going of being like are they gonna do it like is it happening is this where it happens it is a really it, it is a really good cast. Like good for you, Ryan Murphy. You get like Oscar nominee Quavinsene Wallace, who was like the youngest person ever nominated at the time that she was nominated. You got her to do this episode, mm -hmm. and you know there's some other people in this episode I wasn't as familiar with who I hadn't like seen before. But like I hope that they use some of these people again moving forward. Yeah. All right. So I think we're both feeling good about the direction of this season right now. Yeah, I'm feeling good about it I, I was pretty worried after drive it was just so badly written that i was just like oh goodness did they like sort of shoot their shot with dollhouse and then we're <laughs> moving into just sort of like wah wah for the rest of the season but that is not the case this was excellent great cast great story you know scary moments fun ride all right well of course we will be back to see where things go from here. Fingers crossed. Well, hit the subscribe button so you guys don't miss any of that. And we'll see you here next time.